Assume now that the sum of the exogenous demand variables is 600. Assume also that the marginal propensity to consume, MPC, is 0.6. So endogenous demand is 0.6 times y. This is reflected in an AE curve that is a straight line with an intercept of 600 and a slope, or NPC, of 0.6, generating equilibrium output, income, and expenditure of 1,500 each. The effect of a change in income on endogenous demand and consequently on aggregate expenditure is measured along the AE curve. Turning to the AE functions, exogenous demand variables, we call a change in one or more a demand shock to the economy. Demand shocks affect the AE curve's intercept, shifting the AE curve vertically. Assume that the economy is subject to a positive demand shock, increasing exogenous demand and aggregate expenditure, as indicated by the vertical distance between the two AE curves. It appears that the increase in aggregate expenditure generates an increase in equilibrium income and output that is much larger than the original increase in demand. How can that be? Look here. Assume again that the economy is hit by a demand shock, like an increase in the consumption function's exogenous term by delta C bar. The increase in C bar increases AE, and since this is a short-term model, the increase in AE is met by an increase in output. And since output is mirrored by income, by an increase in income by delta Y. This starts a new process. It appears from the endogenous consumption term of the AE equation that the increase in income increases endogenous consumer demand, generating another increase in aggregate expenditure and in output, generating another round of increases in income, consumption, and aggregate expenditure, in income, consumption, and so on and so on.